guys, that's sure come out today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video with another champion guide for you. This time is going to be Volgoth. Volgoth, one of my favorite epics really added to the game, in, in recent memory at least, right? He was actually added way back in, where is this? When, when was this? Uh, it was uh, uh, January of 2021. So gosh, over two years ago inside the game. That's pretty crazy. Two and a half years. Uh, he was added with Iron Brago. Well, you guys can see all the champions. Uh, Ugo and Ursula the Mourner and Vogoth all added on the same day. Man, that is a stacked lineup of epic champions inside the game a lot of requests for vogoth as well we have jerome looking for a vogoth guy we have red aries just pulled him congratulations man we have lemon loving the champ guides really appreciate a vogoth guide asking you shall receive joseph and lemon we got jammy dodger saying i'm looking to please do a sky touch shaman and a vogoth guide he loves his healers love my skaramis build i copied from your video i love that champion man uh, Keisho, Keho, asking for a Vogoth and Harvest Jack. Pumpkin Man needs some love. I can do a Harvest Jack. I can do a Harvest Jack soon. I see you, man. I see you. Day one, day two, day three. Joseph again. Uh, and then our Tavian Simmons looking for a Vogoth. Don't be sad about it, man. Your day has come. Or maybe I should say Vogoth day has come. So why is everybody talking about this champion? Uh, what's so good about Vogoth, right? Well, the first good thing about him is you can build him super super slow let me tell you why let's start with his passives right his path passive number one is festering dynamo now he's an undead horde spirit affinity uh hp based epic champion so festering dynamo the first thing that you need to notice and re need to recognize about this champion is no cooldown on this passive most powerful passives in this game have at least a one turn cooldown some don't most do uh, or even you know larger than one turn this one there's no cooldown it happens every single time he's hit regardless of how long it takes him to take a turn in between those hits uh and refresh his cooldowns don't need that on vogoth whenever this champion is attacked heals all allies by 50 percent of the damage received 25 percent from boss attacks this champion only receives half Half of the heal that the other allies receive. Oh man, this is such a nasty, nasty passive. It truly makes him one of the best healers out there in the game. And the build, I'm not going to show you this build in today's video, but he's one of the few champions out there that I think absolutely justifies uh, building in a curing set, right? Curing gives bonus heals on every heal, and he's healing so damn much by so large amount such a large amount that it really does have a profound impact on the total amount of healage this champion can bring to the table so again curing set is a great way to run this champion especially in dungeons uh in anywhere you just want extra heals throughout the duration of a longer battle on the second passive eerie presence when attack places a leech on the attacker for two turns just like, that's a great little passive just starting out, right? We get a leech on the attacker for two turns when he's attacked. If the attacker is under a provoke debuff placed by this champion, also is 100% when booked of increasing the cooldown of a random skill on the attacker by two turns. Occurs once per attack. Again, no cooldown. A lot of people I found sleep on this second passive of Vogoth. That leech is amazing. It even makes for more heals. And again, it's not predicated on his speed. He does need accuracy, though, to land that leech. Keep that in mind. And then the cooldown of their skills by two turns. If they're under a provoke placed by this champion, it's a great, great ability, okay? On his A1, it's a triple hitter. Each hit has a 40% chance win boat of increasing the duration of one random debuff on the target by one turn. So now he's a triple hitter. He's one of the best, if not the best fire knight healers out there in the game because you can take that shield down you can put phantom touch on him you can put miracle heal on him if you want to uh and get restored max hp or get an extra hit against that shield on the a1 so those are two blessings you can consider with this champion right out the gate and then on the a2 it's an aoe on a three turn cooldown has a 75 percent chance of placing a provoke on all enemies for one turn also has a 75 percent chance of placing a decreased attack debuff for two turns on targets who receive Receive the provoke debuff from this skill. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What a great kit, huh? I mean, you can use him just for the heals 
or you can build them out in, in you know, especially in faction wars, areas like that, and be a great provoker with the decrease attack. It's not 100%, but it is on a three-turn cooldown, okay? And it has that synergy uh, regarding the cooldown of their skills off of the second passive. So, you know, just reading this dude's kit, I think, even if you're already vaguely familiar with this champion, I think it, it gives you a healthy amount of respect for everything that he's bringing to the table. No lore, unfortunately, for Vogoff, but let's go ahead and show you how I have him built. I have him in an arena build, but I hesitate even saying that because you can definitely get utility out of him as a healer in this build anywhere inside the game. So let me go ahead and show you guys. Vogoff, we have him in, that's right, a bolster and a perception set. So Bolster gives a protected uh, shield 30% of the ally's HP for three turns. Also heals wear by 10% for every turn. So you're getting a mini regeneration. Regeneration is a 15% heal. You're getting that built into a protected shield. The only reason you the only uh, reason you would not, not want, excuse me, a bolster over a shield set would be a seer activation team because you can't strip them off because they're protected. Every other uh, scenario though, bolster is the way to go and he's a great champion to run in a bolster set. So today I have a very slow build on Vogoth. Nothing wrong with that, right? Because we can get all both of those passives, the leeches, the cooldowns, and the heals, regardless of what speed this dude is, right? So we have him slow at 142 and a ton of HP at 86k. Now you might be saying, Ash, this is cool, but I don't think this build is for me, man. I want to build him a little bit faster. I do want to rely a little bit on those provokes. I'm using them mainly for faction wars or whatever. That's totally fine too. All you have to do is put a speed boots on him instead of HP percentage boots and maybe, you know, take away the bolster set if you want to, or you can keep it on depending on what you're looking for, right? I like the bolster because I love that shield. Even outside of the arena, I love bolster. I think it's just a great, great, great set. One of the strongest out there in the game, in my opinion. Uh, when, the, when it's Forge Pass bolster season... I'm always keeping track of my Forge Pass, you know, unlike most sets out there. Although I will say Righteous is also S tier, but that's the season that we're in right now at the time of this recording. So anyway, guys, pretty simple build. All I'm trying to do is get his HP as high as, as humanly possible. So HP percentage on the boots, HP percentage on the chest, HP percentage on the gauntlets. Again, I'll repeat it one more time for the kids in the back. Uh, speed on the boots are totally fine as well, okay? Now, if I was relying on him... Uh, in a big way for those provokes, I would definitely put an accuracy banner on him. So again, if you want to get full utility in a more kind of traditional build on this champion, speed on the boots, accuracy on the banner. Those are the only changes I would I would make here, right? Uh, so accuracy is going to bump us up to like over, you know, around 300 if we have accuracy on that banner. But for now, we're just trying to get the most HP humanly possible on this champion. A little bit of defense to never hurt anybody. So in HP, uh, you guessed it, on the ring and HP on the amulet as well. So a pretty easy build when we talk about priorities, especially in a bolster set. We want to get that HP as high as possible. Uh, and not to mention... Right? I mean, heals all allies by 50% of the damage received. It gives us a reason to make him super tanky, A, right? So we can take a big hit. And B, we don't need to min-max his defense that much, right? We do have a blessing giving us 300 defense, but we kind of awkwardly want him to take a lot of damage so we get a better heal on everybody else, right? So you don't have to go crazy on the defense, uh, you know, on this champion. We do have Indomitable Spirit on this champion. That's going to give him a chance at blocking stun, sleep, and fear. I'm going to go ahead and change that blessing to Miracle Heal to give me, give me 3,000 HP, instead of in sacrificing a little bit of defense and that is definitely going to help out our heals right and our bolster set self heal as well right so in terms of masteries on this champion i love going with defense and support right if you want to go with offense and just hug the left hand side come down pick up war master that's totally cool too. get a little bit extra damage out of this champion especially if you're just trying to min max and refine your speeds of your your runs uh, but boy i love this defense tree you can tell i have it just absolutely jacked up here uh every defense every extra mastery option is going on the defensive side of things because i want this dude to be the ultimate arena tank right now so i have defiant for some resist i have improved parry to mitigate damage on critical hits but ash you just said you want him to take damage well i mean it is a a, a tight thin line to walk is that a, is that a saying thin line to to walk 
it's a thin line, right? We also want him to stay alive, right? So I think going with some of that is totally cool. We have rejuvenation. Hey, uh, increase the amount of healing and shield uh, buffs his champion receives. Makes perfect sense, right? Uh, resurgent. And then I have shadow heal too. I want this kill guy being healed all the time, right? So he has more HP to stay alive, thus healing my team. Uh, so heals this champion by 6% of their max HP each time an enemy is healed. Occurs once per turn. I like shadow heal. I love resurgent. Uh, I came down uh, Harvest Despair. Uh, he does have Provoke in his kit, but he does not have uh, any of these debuffs. So this, as I'm looking at it, would be unnecessary on this champion unless we had him in like a stun set. So I'm not sure why I have this mastery, guys, but, uh, you know, learn from me. Don't pick up Harvest Despair. You'd be better off picking up Cycle of Magic. Again, I repeat, Cycle of Magic, not Harvest Despair. Harvest Despair does not include Provoke. Uh, almost every other CC there, though. That's kind of awkward. I wish it would add Provoke to Harvest Despair. Anyway, the good news is he has to leech anyway on the second passive. All right, we have Cycle of Revenge, and we have Bulwark. Uh, I love Bulwark. It's going to mitigate damage received from all allies by 5%. So damage mitigation, and then he's going to receive that damage instead, and then he's going to throw it right back to all your allies vis-a-vis -vis that heal, 50% of that damage received. So it's a really nice synergy with his first passive on Bulwark. That's why Bulwark is my favorite mastery on this champion. Other tier 6 options would be Elixir of Life. Giving him 3,000 3, more uh, uh, max HP would be great. Uh, selfless Defender. Decrease the damage all allies receive from the first hit in each round by 20%. He'll receive that damage instead. And again, he he will heal everybody based on that extra damage is great right uh okay those are the the masteries uh anything else i want to touch on cycle of revenge 50 percent chance of increasing the term here by 15 percent when an ally is tacked with a critical hit uh the slower the champion the more effective turn meter increasing and decreasing effects are, right? So in other words, if somebody decreases this guy's turn meter by 5% and we're super slow, it's going to take us longer to get back there, right? Uh, and the same thing with the turn meter boost by 15%. So I went Cycle of Revenge as well. Help him get over to his A2 ability. So there we have it, guys. Talked about the uh, the, the blessings, talked about the stats, talked about uh, masteries on this champion. Uh, let's go ahead and take him into action. Before I show you him on a go second team in the arena, I do want to show you guys really quickly my Doom Tower Nether Spider team. Now, I use the same team uh, based on, no matter the level, right? Everything's going to be the same. Trunda is not necessary at all on this team. All we want Trunda for is to nuke through the first couple waves, right? So, you can ignore her after she gets after she does this right it's nice to be able to in two turns dispose of all of these uh these little minions of the boss uh in the waves that is so when we get to the uh the spider it's going to be easy right he's going to heal everybody right back up uh, through those hits again trun is not going to do too much damage here with her a1 uh then we can go with a helicath or a sir nick basically somebody's going to uh, put a or uh what's his face uh alsagor is that his name I need to do a guide on that guy so I can get his name right, right? Uh, basically, some of the block damage, right? Rosh card works as well. We want to apply a heal reduction. We have Venomage doing this. A heal reduction to the spider. And we have Geomancer putting an HP burn. And that's it. We're staying alive. We have block damage. We have uh, just to get us, you know, to survive in between the block damage. If it wears off, which it inevitably will, especially in hard harder stages, depending on your team, obviously. Uh, but we have Vogoth healing everybody up if we need it as well. And he heals everybody while we're waiting to set this team up. So it's a great strategy. Uh, Vogoth does a fantastic job covering for the team before we get the block damage. And uh, he, you can also use him in Bommel, right? He'll heal off those bomb, that bomb damage from Bommel. So he's definitely one, I would say, one of the most used champions for uh, Bommel. We just don't have him here on this rotation. So, so unfortunately, I'm relegated to showing you some spider runs, some nether spider that is. Uh, but yeah, he's fantastic against a bunch of different Doom Tower bosses. Nether Spider and Bommel just being two of them. So, there we go. This is the most effective way to kill Nether Spider, in my opinion, uh, by far. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you guys inside the arena. So I have a nice little team built here. Let's start going against a, a non-tanky team. Uh, then we can we'll kind of move our way over there. So we have Helicap on the team. Certainly an OP uh, Helicath, but I put him in there because I like having a defense-based champion with Seeker. I like running Seeker on the same team as Vogue. Like, this is a great go-second team. We have the Nukage and Magnar, HP-based champion, right? 
We have Seeker in the lead, defense in, in arena battles. And Seeker's passive is so freaking underrated in the arena. Heals his champion by 20% uh, of, of his HP and places an increased defense on all allies for two turns when he's hit with a critical hit. That's going to get more damage out of Helicath because he's a defense-based champion. Helicath can come in here and place a block damage on all allies as well. He also has a shield on the A2. So I think Helicath is just one of the best Go Second champions if not the best inside the entire game. So I threw him on the team as well. Uh, but yeah, what a great team. What a, what a really, really well-balanced and uh, just tremendous go second team. So this, this doesn't have to be your first arena team. This could be your second arena team. So this team came at me with a lot of damage and we die. So that's not cool. But maybe, Helicath, maybe he can finish everybody off on his own. Let's see. Can you do it? Can you do it? This wasn't exactly how we uh, how we wrote up this first battle. We're, we are going to win, but it's like Helicath. He's like, okay, guys, I got this one, man. Don't you worry about a thing. It's all on me. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, probably not the best uh, lead in uh, fight here, but I'm not going to cut any losses or anything like that. Going to give you guys the wins. And I'll give you guys the losses and I'll give you guys the ugly wins like that as well. Let's go against this squad here. So the idea is they go first, but they don't kill us. We do have that nice bolster set, but man, that team was strong. They kind of bled right through it. So we have so many different things that we can do right now. I'm actually going to lead in with the A2 to do a little bit of damage, get rid of their shields, or at least some of their shields. And now we get hit with a critical hit, thus the increased defense is on all of our team. We come in with the AoE times 2 from Magnar. Not doing a ton of damage, but it's okay. We can come in here. They all have block debuffs, so it doesn't matter who we attack there. We're just going to attack... Uh, uh, Eric, is that, is that, uh, oh, Vizix. I was like, Eric's Vizix? Who are you? But notice one thing about my team here, right? Look at our health. We're really healthy right now. And that's from all of Vogoth's heals, right? So it's not going to be a, uh, oops, not going to be a super fast run, but it's a beautiful run because it's a go second team, right? And they go first. And that's the magic of Vogoth. You don't need any of these champions to go alongside him. But just the fact that he is healing every time he gets hit by an AoE, a, a hit, right? So champions to avoid with Vogoth, I think this is important as well, right? Is going to be like single target hitters who can avoid him, right? Then he's not healing. So you go against a Turvold, you go against especially a Rodos because he's magic affinity as well. He can easily one-shot uh, Vogoth. Those would be the champions that would definitely avoid when running a Vogoth team, right? But against AoE nukers, and there's a million of them out there, that's when you can really get some magic from this champion. Magnar, you're not hitting so hard today, my friend. What's up with that, dude? Supposed to be a beast. Now, I guess a team like this with a bunch of, uh, of block debuffs and stuff like that, you're not going to land many of those provokes. But hey, when you do land a provoke, it comes in handy as well because then you can start uh, reducing the cooldown of their skills when he's attacked by them. Uh, so that's really, really nice there. It's probably the only area that we're not going to appropriately or properly show off here on this uh, this one. So we have three spirit affinities going against a magic affinity. Uh, so it's going to take us a second, but we'll eventually get through here. <laughs> Man, you don't see too much knock the paralyzer in the arena, uh, but get the job done there. Seeker, by the way, I should say is not built for the arena right now. So don't hold it uh, too much against him. Seeker is built for a clan boss right now, so he has not a lot of defense. An uh, unkillable clan boss team. He has not a lot of defense, and he has, uh, he's min max for damage, right? So he has a lot of damage. 100% crit rate and like 250 or so crit damage on Seeker right now. So he is dying, but you can see, got that team down, and again, they're, they're rocking a couple of uh, magic affinities of their own. Let's go ahead and do one more battle here, guys. Let's choose a force affinity team. We are going to break the rule that we just made. No, we're not. We're not going to. See, this is a team to avoid. We still might be able to beat them, especially with Helicath on the team. But the thing is, they have two strong magic affinity champions. They have Rotos who can avoid uh, uh, hitting Vogoth, thus no heals. And they have Mountain King who can avoid hitting him as well, right? So uh, probably not the team that you want to be attacking. But a team with a bunch of force affinity champions. Let's see if we can find one here. Uh, well, you know what? It's not a bunch of Force Affinity champions, but this is a really OP uh, go first team. Let's see how we do against this squad. All right. So we come in here. Turn is going to give it to us. We get hit first, which is beautiful. He gets his job done, honestly, right? Trunda comes in with a big nuke, and we stay alive. That's most important. I'm going to go in the A2 here so we can still get the heals. Beautiful job. 
And again, I mean, like, let me just do that same exact. Let me, obviously we would have won this, right? But I'm going to purposely lose. I'm going to take Vogoth out of the team so you can see how normally that would kill us, okay? If we didn't have that heal, we'd all be toast and we wouldn't get the win, right? All right, Jolly Roger. You know Jolly Roger is going to be like, oh, I just beat Ash, ha, 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 ha. We let you win, man. We let you win. <laughs> all right, let's take Vogoth out now and put like, I don't know, it, does, it doesn't really even matter that much. Let's put a uh, Harima. Let's put a Harima in there instead, right? So an OP, way better than Vogoth, legendary in a vacuum. So here they go. They come in. They could do the same thing. And now she kills everybody except for Harima. I might be able to still toast him. Ah! <laughs> Harima's too good, man. She's too good. Uh, but you guys get the point, right? Like, Harima, okay, fair enough, right? Uh, Trunda, she has the positive. She was probably a bad sub in. But the point is, is that everybody would have died other than Magic Affinity, who mitigates uh, enemy ignore defense effects. Let's do one more battle here before I let you guys go. This team looks pretty good, too. They also have an AoE Nuker in Candyman, uh, who is Force Affinity. So that's a perfect, perfect uh, scenario here. Oops, I have Harima in there. Well, let's just see what the, let's see if the Harima team dies, right? Let's see. Here it goes. Oh, of course, Vogoth goes in with that. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I really want. Okay, they're not gonna. They're not gonna die. Let's end the battle. Let's end the battle. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Good. 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 All right. Okay. Who knows? Who knows? Let's put Vogoth back on the team there, Ash. And another team that thinks they got the better of me. Where? Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's go ahead and get Vogoth back in there. And see what happens here, guys. What about you guys? Where do you use Vogoth? Do you love him as much as I do? <laughs> All right, here we go again. He comes in there, gets a decreased defense. We also have increased defense. Everybody's asleep. And he comes in there, and again, Seeker dies, just like we said he was going to. But he comes in there, and everybody just gets healed right back up from Vogoth, right? That's the magic of Mr. Vogoth. And Deacon gets the, gets the provoke. So we're going to see. We're probably going to smoke everybody before Deacon gets a chance to go. Uh, almost. Let's kill Cardial. Uh, but yeah, man, this guy's great on a go second team. Bolster set. You get that nice beefy shield as well. He can take a punch, heal everybody else back up. Uh, love this champion. Hopefully you found this guide useful, guys. We talked about a lot. Uh, a lot of different use cases, not just the arena on this champion as well. Keep the requests coming. Much love. Send us some positive vibes your way, guys. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. And as always, take care, guys.